Hey everybody, welcome to Nomadic Moments. We're about to finish up these renovation projects. But again, one of the things we really wanted to do was utilize all the space we had available. And one of the things we realized was there was a jump seat right here in between the driver and passenger seat. We decided that was just mostly a waste of space and we needed more room to store a lot of our camping and hiking gear. So we built a custom armrest in our F-250 to utilize that space. So let me show you how we went about doing that. I've got to remove both seats. I got to basically remove all the all of this to remove this. It's it's bolted into the same spot as the seats are and they're on top of it. I'm going to remove both seats and then remove the center console and see what I have to work with as far as space goes and then we'll redesign it. I still want cup holders. They're they're terrible cup holders. I still want some place to, you know, put change and park passes and things like that. So I think that's all going to end up back here, but for now uh, we're just going to take a blank slate and I'm going to get this out and redesign the space. I got the passenger seat out. Um, it's basically just four nuts, well, two bolts in the front, two, bolt, two nuts in the back. The nuts have like a lock washer on them, so I had to pry that off and then, uh, and then I could release the nut, but uh, pretty straightforward so far. The front piece attaches right here. Uh, so it's just a bar right here, so that should lift off once I got the other side loose. Unfortunately, this side is, is actually separate. It's, uh, it's a star bit, and I don't have one that size, so I'm going to have to go get it. There she is. Center console. Um, got it out. One surprise was that there is a electrical J-box underneath here, which is right there. It, it's up about two or three inches, which is unfortunate. No seats. <laughs> so we're gonna vacuum this out, put the seats, put the passenger and the driver's seat back in, uh, and then that'll give me a better idea of what I have to work with here. So I got the seats back in. The only thing I would mention is, is that, well, at least in the Ford F-250 2008 model, um, there is a wire underneath the driver's seat. It's not underneath the passenger seat that you have to disconnect when you remove the seat. Uh, so don't forget to connect that back. There is quite a bit of space here, so that's real nice. Uh, it's it's a little lumpy. Um, I mean, there's a huge difference between here and here. Kind of angles up all the way to here, and then I've got to cut it in here and keep going this direction. So this is all very wavy and uneven. I'll show you how I am planning to do this. Okay, so the first thing I did is I took my measurements inside the truck, and then I catted it up. Um, and then once I had it designed the way I wanted, I drew out one of the panels because it's really the side panel that's going to be really hard to get in the right place because it has so many uh, different angles and waves. So that's kind of what it ended up looking like. So I traced that out on a piece of foam and then I cut that out of a, of a piece of foam. You can see I taped on some extra pieces because I got the measurements wrong so I needed to adjust that. So. I'm going to take this, which looks like it fits pretty well in the space, and I'm going to use it to trace out my wood pattern and then jig it out. So this should give me a pretty good idea of my passenger panel. I'm trying to get it placed in there. It's fit pretty good on this side. I look really fat in this image, so no, I don't. I'm not that fat. For the driver's side panel, I actually have to make this into two pieces. It's not the easiest project, that's for sure, but this works out pretty well. I got this foam. This is actually just a piece that came with the uh, solar panel. So I took my template, my foam template, and now I've got my board cut out. So traced it, cut it out with the jig, uh, used the table saw on the, on the straight edges. Uh, I'm using half inch board plywood. I did realize in this process that the driver's side is not the same, so we have more, we have different obstacles to overcome on the driver's side. So I'll have to start over, cut the foam again, and then, uh, and then try to match the height. As you can see, we got all the primary pieces cut out here. There are a lot of weird angles to this. Went through a lot of foam, but I got it done. We're ready to move on and start constructing this thing. What I did is I attached this board to the inside edge and that gives me something to attach to. Uh, it just gives the, the box more strength without uh, adding a lot of weight. I've got a few more of those I'll do on the inside as well to help with all basically all the junctions, all the corners. And I brought the box for a fit, so we're checking this out. 
I've got it framed up as you can see. Uh, I had to put the support, I used a 5 8 inch quarter block for uh, support in the corners. Uh, so it'd be real nice lightweight. I have this box back here that's in the back seat. So I just made this one to sit right on top of that one. It looks like it's gonna fit really well. So, um, you know, this piece, this main piece is together. I have to do a little L here around the, the four wheel drive shifter. I got this handle. I think it's really meant for like a Tahoe. And, uh, but I, I'm gonna use it. So I'm gonna put it on the lid and it's gonna clamp in right there and that's gonna hold the lid down just like that. So I had to route that out and then I had to cut the hole um, right there for the little tooth. My hinges I bought at uh, Lowe's and I'll show you those later, but they're gonna go on the inside so they won't, they won't show. Cut this access panel. So, you know, the main part right here is gonna lift up. I have access to all of this, but this area up underneath here um, could be hard to access. So I just wanted it to make it easier. So I put this access panel to the passenger side and we'll put that on a little hinge and a magnetic latch. So I've done most of the work, um, but I had to get it in here so I could figure out what these angles are. Uh, the truck doesn't really have any right angles. So my initial measurements were just close. You know, they're, they're not exact. It needs to be pretty exacting. So I'm coming back. I'm trying to build a little bit at a time and come back and make sure the measurements are good. Uh, go back and build a little bit more and come back and make sure the measurements are good. So it's a pretty slow process. The box is pretty much done being cut. All I got to do left is cut this uh, access panel and then I'm going to route the top edge of this piece. This obviously isn't attached at the moment. Uh, I'm going to route the top edge of this piece so it's uh, when it's open it's nice and smooth. I decided to use screws on this panel. I don't know if you can see that. Um, mostly because uh, I still have to remove this to paint it and lacquer it, uh, or put some urethane on it anyways. It's a very tight fit um, with the dash and everything, and there's a hump inside the, uh, inside the casing, so this has to lift up to slide out, and the dash, if I, if I didn't make this removable, the dash would actually have to come off. I also need to cut it still because there's going to be cup holders here. I'm waiting on the cup holders to come in though, so uh, they should be here tomorrow. But yeah, it's progressing along. It all fits, which is really nice. It's nice and snug. It doesn't really move much, so uh, and it's not even screwed in at the moment. So when I go to attach it, attach it, I'm gonna put some screws in these boards into the box that I previously did. The bro the, the the bike box is actually bolted to the floor, so um, rather than having to figure out more bolt points, I decided I'll just screw it into that box and and we should be good. So that's it for now. Next thing to do is to pull it out, route it up, and paint it black. Or, I'm not sure I'm gonna paint it black. I may paint it uh, the tan color of the dash to match. Or I may uh, get a spray liner and put that on it. Uh, I haven't really decided yet, so uh, stay tuned. All right, so I just got done uh, putting the putty on. Uh, so just some wood putty. You can see it's all along there. I also cut the door. Um, I went ahead and rounded the edges on the outside a little bit just to make it more friendly to hands as they go through there. And I also just sanded the inside edge a little bit. I made a door. Um, I kind of messed up a little bit on the finger hole. So I've got a finger hole. Um, I was out of, I'm, I've already sold all my bits. So I had to do what I could and then I caught it and it messed it up. And, but anyways, I think it looks okay. It's kind of like I cut a knot out of it, which is kind of cool. Once the putty dries and we'll sand that off real well, then it'll be ready to prime and then paint. I've got my primer done. And so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll get started on the paint. So I decided to go with something that matches the dash a little bit, uh, really the glove compartment color. So um, I'm gonna go with this. It's got some flakes in it. It doesn't match perfectly, but uh, I think it'll be okay uh, and then of course once I've got uh, the paint on I'm gonna seal it up with uh, some polyurethane so I've, I've gone with the satin on this one that's the plan and for now it's just drying the paints on uh, now it's time to put a clear coat on it seal it up yeah so we'll put a coat on and then give it a little bit of sanding and then once it dries and then give it a little bit of sanding and then put another coat on sand it again and then put a third coat on and then see if it needs a fourth coat. Usually three is good. Graceful. So I've got my uh, four coats of uh, urethane on this. 
Uh, so this is the main piece. It's all nice and smooth now. The next thing to do is to put some padding on the armrest, uh, part of the console here. So I've got this foam that came with some of my solar panels. Uh, it's only about half inch thick, uh, but I think that's enough. It doesn't have to be crazy. It just, you know, give it a little padding when uh, you put your elbow on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut this so that it wraps over the edge just a little, like that. And the fabric should pull it back and then the fabric will be stapled to the back side. I only painted and lacquered the back side of this because the front side's not gonna be seen anyways. This was a two person job to get this on. So uh, what I did is, uh, it's kind of just, I can probably pull these clamps off. Give me just a second. Uh. There's the foam. So that'll be the top, and we're gonna cut, of course, cover it with fabric. And I kind of wrapped it over the edges just a little bit. It needs to be smoothed out. I'll get my, uh, my razor blade out and smooth that out a little bit so it's nice and even with the top of the board. But anyway, so I used a counter glue to actually glue that in, uh, like you use for like laminate. I had it laying around and I thought, oh, that'll totally work. So it's just a glue you would, you would apply to this surface and then apply to the, uh, the foam, and then you stick them together. Um, you actually let it dry a little bit, like five to 10 minutes, and then you put them together, and then it's instant bond. You can't even adjust it, so you put it on and it's there. So the only thing we, had, we did is I let it dry on the main part, and then I applied the edges, um, and then clamped those up like you saw. So, so my fabric, so I pulled our back seat off of the truck, so it's right here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take like a piece of this panel out and uh, use that to uh, cover the armrest so it'll match the rest of the truck, which would be nice. We got one side of the pocket sewn here, as you can see. Just sewed up the corners, did an inside stitch like that, and just folded it over. That worked pretty well. That corner looks better than the other corner, so I'm gonna try to match what I did there over here. So I've made my cuts on this side. Didn't cut it quite at a 90, so I have a little bit of overlap as it comes together, and that pinches back. And once I've got that done, I'll just flip it over and staple everything together. So for the back, all I did was run some staples along the edges there, uh, mostly just doing the middles at first. And then you can see it gives you a lot of extra fabric here in the corners. You know, you don't want that, it'll just push the armrest up. So what you do is, and I already did this one, you do staples on either side, pulling that fabric to basically to a, to a point. And then you're gonna hack that off and you end up with something that looks like that, nice and clean, pretty low profile. I put some extra staples across after I cut it off as well. So there we have it. There's our armrest, uh, all stapled up and ready to go. Not too shabby for a piece of used fabric. So the black side there is gonna be where the hinge is. So I'm just gonna set it over here. I've actually already mounted the hinges. So on the uh, main piece, so I can see how they're gonna fit just like that. So I got these internal cabinet hinges, kinda cool. So what I'm gonna do is just hold it, hold it up and get my measurements make sure everything falls together the way I want it to. And then uh, we'll uh, screw this on. Worked pretty well. So I put this little latch on here and uh, I did cut the hole so that the latch would hold, but I forgot to calculate the fact that the foam was gonna push that out. So um, I'll have to get some kind of little metal latch or angle iron or something there to, to clip that on to just cover up that previous hole and it should look okay. Went ahead and did this door as well so I put the hinges on and put the latch mechanism on, on that too so it's the access from the passenger side. In addition to the, uh, the cup holders that'll go here I've got this grip pad for phones and things uh, that'll go right on the front like that so Ready to put in my cup holders because my drill bit, hole saw, uh, came in three and three quarters of an inch, just in case you're curious. It's a little guy. Dang it. Right. I've got it clamped down to this board uh, underneath so that I don't get any blowout on the other side. So I'm gonna drill these three points and get ready to put it in. All right, here we are. 
got the uh, got the front panel in and with the cup holders cut I just set this one in here they just pop out for easy cleaning originally I was gonna glue them in I'm glad it didn't take because popping them out makes it really easy to clean these cup holders have a little spout on the bottom of them They're made for a marine application I just cut that off and filled it with some sealant so that if there was some sweating of the drinks or whatever and water pulled down in there it wouldn't drop down in the storage area below to fix the latch problem i just went out and got a window latch like you can see right there and just use the bottom half of it so that when it clasps down it clips right on there and it covers up the hole nicely so it was a little bit of a fail in design, but it worked in the long run. I also added this two-way leveling system so that when we're parking the truck, we can see how level we are. As you can tell, we're not super level at the moment. Sorry. Sorry to be. I'm editing this. And of course, this is the pad, the stick pad that I told you about earlier. It just lays on top. I'll put a link on the website. But it just lays on top. And then you can put your cell phone or whatever in there and it doesn't slide around. I added this gooseneck so I can attach my phone. It's just an easy clip. Clip in. I use some wire clips to clip that into the actual frame. As you can see here, the L in the design allows for the drive shift, the four-wheel drive drive shifter to be easily accessed. The side container ended up working out. Gives us access to all the little things we need. Some of you are asking probably, what about change and credit cards and things like that? Well, I added this credit card pouch. Just put some Velcro up there so we can have all our passes and gas cards, club cards and all that stuff, national park passes and stuff like that. Easily accessible underneath. And if we want to take it with us, we just pop it off and we can take it with us. We've been really happy with this armrest renovation, and if you want more details, go to the website and check that out, nomadicmoments.com. I'll put a link in the section below. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and do that right there. Until next time, guys, we're going to keep traveling.